Sometimes taking a mortgage can be stressful and frustrated. It could be a lengthy process sometimes and it could be stressful, but you know, that's why, that's why you, you want to hire the right person to walk you through everything. So the person you work with need to be knowledgeable. In the industry about 10. We do a lot. We're a large team. We cover, you know, multitude of states. Freedom's a national mm -hmm. company and, and in, in, in particular, our team covers, you know, a lot of the states on the East Coast. Reachable. How do people find you? Google my name, but uh, the good thing is I'm available directly on my cell phone, so you don't have to um, you don't have to you know chase me around or find me or you know. Resourceable. I'll always be there for the client, and, and you know I always make that very clear, right? That you can always call me, but sometimes I'm not going to have the answer, but I will point you in the right direction, right? I'll tell you who to call. Yeah, because I don't handle that. Yeah, I don't handle the you know if you can't pay your mortgage, I'm not the one to talk to. Um, or if you need a forbearance agreement, I'm not the one to talk to, but I can point you in the right direction on what department you need to speak to, or if you should be speaking to a lawyer, things like that. And the fun to work with. We're not, we're not gonna go to national TV. <laughs> so. I'm going to national TV. <laughs> Last time we talked about how to apply a mortgage and what now to do during the process. Even though we tried to simplify the process in the video, but there are still a lot of decisions to make before you lock a loan with a lender. So in this video, we're gonna cover what type of lender you should go to and what kind of loan you should get 15 years versus 30 years. And if refinance makes sense to you, even though the interest rate is record low. <music>basically there's a few different places you can get a mortgage but typically you're going to see the three different types of of, of, um, of places where you can apply for a mortgage number one would be a depository lender right those are our um, lenders that you see on the, you know the brick and mortar type of places a place where you can go in make a deposit you can take a student loan you can take a credit card things like that um, then you have uh, then you have institutions like like Freedom Mortgage, which are are direct lenders. They're mortgage banks, right? So mortgage the, banks. Yeah, which only focuses on mortgages. So you can't go in there for other products. You can't go, you know, open up a savings account. It it's it's solely dedicated to um, lending money for mortgages. Oh. Yeah, and then you have a mortgage broker, which is a third party, which goes to other institutions to arrange the loan. So they don't actually fund any any of the loans. They don't actually lend the money. They're just a third party that sets it up. So it sounds like the mortgage bank is more specific for people for getting mortgage. So sure. the bank will do all kinds of things, including mortgage. Mortgage broker doesn't have an entity. They work with different banks. Correct. But mortgage bank is specific work for the people who yeah, a mortgage bank, in, in my opinion, is the best source to get a mortgage. You have the, the highest level of expertise with the, with the most amount of flexibility. I don't see much, much benefit for a mortgage broker. That's why you don't see so many out there these days. Oh, right? really? Yeah. Most, most, most places people are taking mortgages, majority of them are through direct channels. So whether it be a depository lender or a, a, you know, a mortgage bank, mortgage banks are, are few and far between these days. Why people go to bank? I think I people know. probably don't know. Maybe. That's why we think this Maybe. video. Maybe. Exactly. That's why we're making the video. Another question. 15 years versus 30, 30 years. So many ads says you should pay 15 years and so many people say no, you should pay 30 years. So, so confused. Yeah. So, there's no correct answer to it. Um, I think it's personally, what I think it's, what, what it comes down to is your personal situation, right? Mm -hmm. And your personal needs and wants. If you know that you're going to be in the property for a long period of time and you can qualify and afford comfortably the 15 year mortgage, then it's not a bad thing to at least consider it. Okay. okay? Um, conversely, if you are not sure or you intend on only being in the property for a short amount of time, then the 30 year is probably the best scenario because it gives you the lowest payment comparatively to the 15 year. Oh, so you mean like five years later, I'm going to sell it. So yeah. I pay less. So oh, why I pay the 15 year? Because, okay, so for the 15 years, that definitely you're going to pay more every month. 
sure. than 30 years. But in the long run, you pay less than 30 years. Yes. Years. If you're seeing it through the whole term, if you're comparing the 15 to the 30 and you, and you stayed the whole time and you paid out the entire amortization schedule, then sure, you're going to end up paying less money on the 15 year than the 30 year, right? Um, but most, mo in most case scenarios, people don't stay in their houses for 15 to 30 years. They're statistically likely to sell in the first, I think, seven years. But, but is there any difference uh, for the rate? Yeah, typically 15 years is a little lower rate. But also, even if you do have a 30 year loan, you can make extra payments to principal, mm -hmm. which would shorten the term. So even though I have a 30 year mortgage, I could pay it off in 15 years. Uh -huh. You just have to make extra payments. Extra payment, but you pay the same interest. Yes. Right? Yes, but if you're no, paying it for a shorter amount of time, you also save apply. the money. Same but concept. Same, same apply for 15 years. If yeah, I of course. Do you want to pay it off in 10 years? Yeah, same thing. So for the refinance, I heard people like refinance like crazy. Right. So what kind of situation and who does refinance make sense? Sure. Um, so yeah, refinancing is definitely very popular these days, being where the interest rates are. Uh, there are a lot of yeah, of course. There there are a lot of different reasons to um, to refinance, but typically it's most people are refinancing to lower their their monthly payment. Okay. Right. Um, that could be that could be done with a couple different a couple different ways. Right. You could lower the interest rate, or you can also get rid of mortgage insurance. Right. If let's say you bought the house at a minimum down payment a few years ago, but now your your house is appreciated a certain amount, you could when you do the refinance, you could drop the mortgage insurance and lower the interest rate at the same time, which gives you, you know, significant savings. But they're not the involved. Sure. Right. There are always closing costs. And again, right. it really depends on what type of mortgage it is and, and you know what the amount is. But typically you, you are going to assess it in, in how much you're saving for how much you're spending and how quickly you're going to make up that cost. Refinance is not for everyone. No, it's not for, for the everyone. people who like significantly lower or pay less yeah. every month, mm -hmm. then they make up with the fee sure. that you're gonna pay when you refinance. Mm -hmm. If not, it doesn't make sense. No, we're we always we always want to make sure that it's worth it for worth it, our, right? for our client, right? We don't want to have them paying fees and going through a whole process for, then, for something it's that it's not worth. Right. Uh, well, it's not, where it's not worth it, um, we're always going to show them the breakdown of, of how much they're saving, how much they're spending, mm -hmm. um, and how quickly they'll make up that cost, and, and ultimately, you know, they're they they'll they'll make a decision whether it's worth it or not. Worth it for them or not. So is there a situation that people pay off their mortgage? Mm -hmm. That's right. But because rates so low, mm -hmm. so they want to like cash off. Yeah, yeah, there are is there that are called refinance as well? Yeah, that's a specific type of refinance. That's less typical than the normal uh, what most people are doing are just a rate and term refinance, meaning you're lowering the rate or and or changing the term. Mm -hmm. uh, cash out refinance. Uh, is, is when you're borrowing against the property, but you're taking cash at the closing. The amount is going to depend on what you qualify for yeah. and a lot of other things. But in just as an example, you can tap into the equity of your home by borrowing against that property. So if you have an $800,000 house, right, and you have no mortgage on it, you can borrow against that and ultimately receive that as cash once you have that loan. But now you have to pay that loan back every month. Right, just like you're taking a mortgage, right? like reverse kind of thing. To take sort of. Sort of. Yeah. And then you, you're going to uh, have the same kind of low interest rate as everybody else. Well, taking a mortgage. there so, are different interest rates for cash out than rate and term. Oh. Right? Typically, the bank assesses a cash out refinance as a more risky loan. So the rates are a little bit different. But even cash out refinance rates are relatively low if you compare them to what rates are over the last 20 years. I heard like 20 years ago, like 13, like 15, 18 percent. Yeah, yeah. That's so crazy. How do people afford that? Yeah, well, I think the purchase prices were a little bit different. Oh, very long, Right? Yes. Um, but nonetheless, it Still. was more expensive to borrow money. I hope those videos can help you to clarify some issues you may have for taking a mortgage. If you have any questions, comment below and don't hesitate to reach out to Michael. His contact is linked below in the description.
All we talked about everything you need to know about mortgage is mainly about traditional lending, such as first time home buyer, primary residence purchase. In this channel, I also talk about real estate investing financing, such as private money, hard money lender, or owner financing. So until next video, stay safe, stay warm. New York snow again. So bye. See you next video.